Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition and this is the channel where we explain it so you don't have to. Yesterday has just hit cinemas worldwide and the movie has a lot to unpack from its plot and ending. Danny Boyle apparently walked out of James Bond to make this movie and throughout this video I'll be breaking down whether I think it was worth it and what the ending of the film means. This is full spoilers ahead so if you don't want to know what happens and haven't seen the movie yet then I highly suggest that you turn off now. With that out of the way I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video, I hope you enjoy it. Now sit back, relax and let's get into my breakdown of yesterday. Yesterday follows Jack Malik, a struggling musician who decides to give it all up after he realises that his career is going nowhere like this channel now that Game of Thrones has ended. Anyway, after there's a worldwide blackout and Jack is involved in a head-on collision with a bus, he finds himself in an alternate universe where the Beatles never existed. Has anyone, right, ever heard of the Mandelin Effect? It's when a group of people incorrectly remember something and many think that it shows that the multiverse actually exists. Like, like classic examples are the Birdstein Bears and Dark Vader saying I'm not the father. Yeah, honestly, it's a real, look it up, it's the Mandolin Effect. How many of you are triggered right now? Yeah, it's the Mandela Effect. It's the, I know what it is, stop writing your comment. Anyway, there's a number of theories on the blackout ranging from solar flares to extraterrestrials and even an act of God, but whatever the case, the Beatles never existed and therefore Oasis couldn't steal all of their songs. Anyway, Jack on the other hand is willing to take all of their work and quickly he rises to the forefront of the music world, being labelled as the best musician of all time by Ed Sheeran who makes his performance in Game of Thrones look Oscar worthy. Just kidding Ed, we love you. However, as Jack ascends into superstardom, he quickly catches the eyes of two other people who, like he does, remembers the Beatles, and slowly they begin to menacingly show up to gigs, which worries Jack that he may be exposed. To make matters worse, his longtime friend Ellie professes her love to him, but states that in order to be with her, Jack would have to give up his dreams and remain in England. Basically, it's just what Yoko Ono should have done, because this makes Jack run for the hills and he continues his rise of stardom until, after Ellie contacts him, he decides to do a gig at the Pier Hotel, which he used to frequent. After the gig, the two characters that were aware of who was really behind the songs confront Jack, but rather than being mad about it, they state they're happy that someone is out singing the songs that they love for the world. They hand him over a piece of paper that just so happens to have John Lennon's address on it. Jack goes to visit John and finds him living a solitary life by the beach in a small cottage that is a far cry from the superstardom that the real Lennon had. Jack asks if he feels like he's been successful, to which John replies he's happy, so he is. This is of course a callback to the famous quote in which John said that at school, when he was asked what he wanted to be when he was older, and he said happy, the teacher scoffed and said he didn't understand the question, and John apparently replied, you don't understand life. John clearly has led a better life than all of the fame and fortune would have led him to, as had he never graced the stage with Paul, Ringo and George, then he would have never been murdered by Mark David Chapman several years later. The fact that Lennon is alive and happy, having lived a full life without his music ever being popular, cements for Jack that fame and fortune are not everything, and it's more important to be happy than to be what's deemed successful by society. I'd be kind of interested to see what Lennon's estate think of this betrayal as it's pretty much saying that he almost wasted his life chasing the wrong things and would have been better in a place if he just kept himself to himself but either way Jack realises the importance of the Beatles and in a final concert he announces the truth about the songs and releases them free for the world. He settles down with Ellie choosing her to have a family with and he returns to teaching to still sing his songs at school. Whilst he never becomes wealthy and wildly famous he becomes rich in other ways that mean more than millions of fans and top 10 trending ending explained videos on YouTube. Please like, share and subscribe. Anyway, it's quite a nice message to take from the piece and one that I wasn't really expecting, especially with the John Lennon cameo. I think the film works excellently at perhaps showing that fame isn't all it's cracked up to be and there often comes more problems than happiness when you're trying to please everyone. 
everyone. In the film, the performances, especially Ellie, really showcase that perhaps a simple, fulfilling life is better than an overt, shallow one, and it's a message that I think is desperately needed in our social media society, where everyone is trying to be the next big thing on Instagram. Overall, I had a lot of fun with the film, and whilst it does drag in some parts, it works brilliantly at a reminder of just how good the Beatles' music was. Unlike Bohemian Rhapsody and Rocket Man, this still manages to paint a sentimental look at the lives of the Beatles, without the need for the piece to be centered around them which is not an easy task. Overall I had a lot of fun with yesterday and it gets a 7 out of 10. Obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on the film and what you took from the Lennon cameo so comment below and let me know and if you enjoy this video then please like it and make sure you check out my breakdown of last week's big release Toy Story which will be linked at the end. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies, so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. I've been Definition, you've been the best, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.